I want to just, first of all, thank Darren for joining us today. Um, Darren is a true global expert in local SEO, all things to do with local businesses and optimizing yourselves for Google so you can generate as much local traffic as possible um, using this sort of Google My Business and all the other local tools. He's also built an incredible company that provides tooling and tracking and um, services that can help with a lot of the problems people have. So you don't have to figure it all out yourselves. But, you know, I just do want to make it very clear. We're not an affiliate. Um, we have actually been offered to be affiliate, but I'm more interested in any savings and just passing it on to you guys. So any of the white spark tools, any of the stuff we show you, you guys can get a 10% discount just by using the keyword YLOPO if you decide to use those. But you should be using some sort of tooling um, to definitely for tracking and reporting. So you know where you stand today, where your competitors are, and where you need to get to. Because, um, you know, what's, what's the famous saying? If you can't measure it, you can't improve it, right? Yeah, so, or, or the what gets measured improves, right? So when you right. measure something, then you actually have a metric to, to, to work, work with. Yeah, yeah. So incredibly important to measure and track stuff, but also incredibly important to check all the right boxes. And most of our clients on here have done all of the basics. They've got Google My Business accounts. You know, they're all verified. Um, they've got reviews. And they're doing, you know, they're doing what they can. But there's so many things to move the needle here. And that's why I wanted to bring on Darren, because he knows all of the things. And I wanted to go over some more sort of advanced type stuff, not just the basics, but stuff that a lot of our audience and certainly a lot of their competitors wouldn't even know about that we can teach you today that you can take away, execute on these and start building that into your business. So you have that advantage because it's nothing better than getting free leads from local people. And generally they're looking for a real estate agent or a realtor or a realtor near them. And that's someone a lot of times who are looking to sell their house because they don't have an agent, right? So a lot of listings, opportunities with the local SEO stuff, um, which is incredibly powerful. So I'm going to stop rambling on. Um, Darren, um, I think you've got a good gist of, you know, what's going on here. So why don't you uh, take over and uh, show us what you got? Sure. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for having me uh, back on the webinar Kiwi, it's a pleasure chatting with you about local SEO. And, uh, you know, you really know your stuff too. So uh, it's great to chat with someone like you. Um, so I'll just give a quick introduction. Yeah, so my name is Darren Shaw. I'm the founder of WhiteSpark, uh, whitespark.ca. Um, we were established in 2005, uh, building websites and doing SEOs for clients. So we've been doing that for a really long time. And then in 2010, we shifted to completely local search company software and services to help businesses rank better in the local pack, the maps results, the local finder results. So really focused on local search. And so I've been researching, writing, speaking about local SEO for uh, more than a decade. Uh, in 2017, David Mims, one of the founding fathers of the industry of local SEO, he handed the reins of a very important survey over to me that's called the Local Search Ranking Factors. And this is a survey of the very best top people in local SEO, people that are researching, working, understanding what drives rankings for their clients. Um, so I survey them usually like, you know, between 40 and 50 people every year. And I get their insights. What is what's really working for them? And then when you aggregate all that data, we produce a report. It's called the uh, local search ranking factors. And I publish that mostly every year. And I just got all the data back for the 2023. So today I'll get to share with you some new insights from that some new questions that I asked, I asked about, uh, you know, are you using AI in your agency? You know, things like ChatGPT. how are you using it? What are some of these really clever things that you can do with this? I asked about what's working. What are the things that surprised you most about local search in the last year? So uh, you're getting 
the very first, like I just was digging through this yesterday. The cutoff was Tuesday night. And so today I get to share with you uh, any new insights and, and hopefully give you ideas and tips to improve your local search rankings that you may not have thought of before. That's my preamble. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Yeah. I've been following you for years and Mike Blumenfield and uh, several of the big boys. So it's, uh, it's really, really exciting for us to have you on. So why don't you go? Yeah, I mean, we, we can start perhaps. Why don't you jump in and say, what are some of the big factors that can help move the needle today that a lot of our clients probably aren't doing um, yep. that they should be doing? All right. So I think we let's just let's just quickly establish what are those fundamental basics. Let's get them out of the way. So if you haven't done these yet, these are the fundamental basics. And we're going to start with the primary category of your Google business profile. I think real estate is pretty obviously, obviously everyone's just going to go real estate agent. That's your number one category. But if you have additional categories that you can apply, I don't know if you, if you do mortgages, you can put mortgage broker, those kinds of anything additional that you're, you provide, if you can find additional categories to add to your Google business profile, the primary category is the number one local search ranking factor. So whatever your primary category is, that's, you want to align that with the keyword you want to rank for. And then any additional categories you can add, that's a huge thing for casting a wider net. It allows you to rank for those other terms as well. And one tip I have for you really quick is you want to look at what are the categories your competitors have, and that might spark some ideas for other categories to add. And you can use a really good Chrome extension it's called GMB Everywhere. And then when you run the search on the left-hand side, it'll just it'll pop in all the categories. You just click each one and then boom, there are all the categories for every single uh, business in the local results. All right, that's super fundamental. I suspect you all know that getting reviews is very valuable, very important. You want to be asking all of your customers for reviews. So that's another foundational aspect. Google, our, our citations or business listings, also foundational. You wanna make sure that you are listed on all of the standard business directories. Um, we have a service at Weisspark that can help you with that. It's our listing service where we can go and build out citations for you. That's another sort of foundational piece. And then a huge one is your website. Google looks to your website as sort of a key source of information about what is this business? What are they all about? What do they do? So the more content you have on the website, the more, uh, the more sort of information Google has about you, that can really improve your rankings. And so improve your rankings, not only in the organic results, but in the local as well. That's the sort of baseline foundational stuff. So let's start talking about some of the uh, more interesting things that are, are surfacing in local search, things that you maybe haven't thought of. So let's, let's assume you have all those basics down. One thing that I wanted to share right out of the gates, because this is brand new, very interesting, is Joy Hawkins over at Sterling Sky just a couple of days ago published a, a, a new article. For the longest time, SEOs thought that the services section, you could fill out the services section in your Google business profile, and it didn't really have any impact on ranking. It was maybe a conversion signal. Uh, people could see that only on the mobile results. But Joy published an article showing that when Google pre like suggests these predefined categories, if you add them to your listing, your rankings for that actually su increases significantly. So the takeaway there, this is new information. The takeaway is look at your Google business profile. So go to edit it and then hit the services section. And if there's any of those sort of oval pill predefined suggestions, add them. Because if you add those, well, if they're relevant. So if, 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 if they're suggesting one that makes sense, press the button. And it, you may not have them, especially in realtors, because there's not a lot of like uh, services other than showing homes. Uh, I don't know if, if Google is even suggesting them, but I did find them on a couple profiles for our clients. Uh, some dentists had like teeth whitening, the like, teeth whitening was showing up as the service. And so for any of those dentists, if they press that button, boom, now they're going to rank better for teeth whitening in their city. So take a look at your Google business profile and see if you have any of those predefined services um, that Google is suggesting and add them if they make sense. So I'll, I'll stop talking uh, and, and, and let, uh, let Kiwi 
ask me some more questions or, or direct things a bit? Yeah, I think um, so. One of the things you mentioned was citations. Um, yeah. I think a lot of our clients may not actually be aware what a cite, some of them do, but most of them may not even be aware what a citation actually is. Can you just quickly um, explain what a citation is? And then I'm going to share a page where I can show the site local citation finder, and I can show about you know, 20 of our clients and then the results as far as citations that they've got and opportunities they've got. Um, oh, because sweet. Because yeah. this is something you never had when we spoke to you last time. And the ability to be able to quickly run a check and to see, yep. okay, I do have citations, but this is how many I don't have. These right. are where the opportunities are. Yeah. And and why is this important? And what, you know, sure. yeah, just start yeah. there. Great. So a citation is a mention of your name, address, and phone number plus website on typically business directories. So you can also get them on other sites. You might get a mention of your name, address, phone number on uh, like a local blog or your realist, the, the mortgage broker you work with or the moving company you, you tend to work with, they might mention your name, address, phone number on there. It's like for a great realtor, contact Sarah Sarah McGill, and this is her name, address, phone number. That's a, a citation. So they're different from links. And the reason why citations are important in local search is in the earliest days when Google was developing a local search algorithm, they wanted to rank local businesses. And local businesses in 2007 often did not have websites. So how do you establish how prominent and popular a local business is when they don't even have a website. And Google's entire algorithm was based on links to websites. So they had to come up with a new way of measuring authority or prominence. And they did that through what's called a citation, a, a mention of the name, address, and phone number. And so <clears throat> they're different from links. So how do you get these? Well, the easiest way to get more mentions of your name, address, phone number on the internet are business directories. There are hundreds of business directories out there and you get listed on them, the yellowpages.com, yelp.com, MapQuest, Superpages. These are all standard business directories. So you want to have your business listed on them. The more you have, generally the better you rank. But I will tell you that it's a small piece of the pie of the entire local search puzzle. Citations, just one piece of it. So it's not like, oh good, I got all these citations. Now I should expect my rankings to be number one because you need everything. You need your website, you need your reviews, you need all the signals on your Google business profile. So there's a lot more to it, but citations is one piece of the puzzle that's very valuable to optimize for. So you wanna be listed on as, as many sites as you can and specifically local specific sites. So that's what a citation is. Now, how do you find them? Well, we have software that's called the Local Citation Finder and Kiwi is uh, showing it right now. So if you look at <clears throat> some of these campaigns here, uh, let's look right at the top here, Bentley's Real Estate. They already have 330 citations, but what? There's still 426 opportunities. So let's click it and look, look at some of those. Just, just click on the, yeah, any of those. It'll take you to the campaign, I think. And so you can see their growth over time here. So you can see that, you know, back in January, uh, 2023, you know, this is weekly. So they went, they've gone from 280 to 330 over the course of the last uh, six weeks. How is that possible? It's because our system's kind of always discovering stuff. It's mostly looking at what does Google think is a citation? So we're, we run a whole series of different Google searches to surface these, and that's how we discover them. And so it's not like this, this real estate agent built that many, but our system discovered that many over time. And so opportunities are the really exciting thing, I think. So if you click opportunities, it should show you, I don't know why it's slogging right now. I know why, because we're doing a demo. <laughs> that always happens. So trying to, there we go. Now, let me caution you. You might already have a citation on YouTube or LinkedIn and the system just didn't find it. Oh yeah, New York Times. That's a good one. You better get that one. <laughs> so you, you might see a lot of opportunities that actually aren't opportunities. And so what I advise people to do is to go through and just hit that to-do button on any of the ones that actually looks look like a good opportunity. House.com. Great for real estate agents. Patch.com. Perfect. Manta. That's a that's a classic. Get on Manta. Merchant Circle. 
Beautiful. So how does this, how does our system get these? They get them by you put in your primary keywords when you enter it, when you create a campaign and we pull your top 10 competitors for all of those keywords, pull all their business listings, and then do a, a sort of cross check. Which ones do they have that you don't? And that's what you're seeing here in this opportunities list. So this software is pretty, pretty great. It's uh, inexpensive and it'll show you all the citation opportunities that you could get for your business. So more citations, better rankings. Now, let me show you one thing though. If oh, So if we go back, I just wanna go back real quick and show you the filters, which I find super value. So where's Bentley? Scroll to the top here. I just wanna see their address. So they are in Newbury, Massachusetts, right? Newbury Port. And that's probably a suburb of a larger city, but it would be great to find opportunities in, in that area. So if you just go to opportunities, yeah, opportunities. So if you go filter by site, type, no, not competitor, go by site and search, just put in the word real, R-E-A-L. Oh yeah. So these are real estate specific directories. Look at these. These are the, these are the beauties. So you want to get listed on these real estate agent websites, huge benefit to these because not only are they additional mention of your business, they also carry a relevancy factor. So it's like, Oh, these are the sites I ex that Google expects to find real estate agents on. Oh, wow. You're on only one out of 50 of them. Get on all of them. Now Google's really increase not only your prominence, but also it's kind of strengthen your relevancy signals. Like this is definitely a real estate agent. So that, so the, the industry specific relevancy is super valuable. And now if you just put in MASS, we might find some Massachusetts because this was an MA, MASS, anything. Yeah. Mass. There's a couple Massachusetts business directory. Sweet. Get on that one. That's a good one for this business. So anyways, that's what the local citation finder can do for you. Finds your existing citations, finds your competitors, shows you the opportunities, and you can filter down to some of these good ones. All right. That's what a citation is. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I just want to make sure we capture that because that is such a cool tool. And I think they can even find all that stuff without even paying for the tool, right? As if you can do a run a free search. Um, you can run a free search, but it's not great because we just kind of, we show you like the top 10 and then the rest are all like, pay us money if you want to see the rest of them. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, but it's super inexpensive. I mean, it is pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, if anyone's looking for citations, like Darren said, it's not the biggest part of the algorithm, but it is an important thing. Something most of your competitors probably don't even know about, and it's easy to get done. Um, but the other big thing, you know, this we touched on this last time, and you've already mentioned it once, as far as creating content on your website that you can sort of cross pollinate um, and use for GMB and for local SEO as well. Yep. What What are your recommendations there? What should people be doing um, to sort of check both boxes when they're creating content? Oh, great. Yeah. So. I find this question a little easier in a different industry. So if I think about, let's say, a local plumber or an HVAC company, they do furnace repair, air conditioning repair, air conditioning installations, air conditioning rejuvenations, I don't know. All they, you can really build out a long list of services. <clears throat> so website content is whatever service and subservice you can think of, make sure you have a page on your website for that. And so uh, the same thing could be done with real estate. So what are the services? Buying homes, selling homes, home uh, um, valuations. Like, I don't know, what are all the services that real estate agents do? Help me out here. Uh, you, know, you know the industry, like what is the list? In fact, we could ask ChatGPT. We can get into that later, but we could ask ChatGPT, give me a list of common services provided by real estate agents and you'll get this massive list, right? So- and you guys, yeah, put some in the in this uh, chat as well, if you guys can think of a service. Um, but yeah, I mean, buying and selling are obviously the most common ones. Home valuations. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other stuff. I can't even think right now, but um, I'm sure people will jump in. Staging, yeah, that is a good one. Um, Staging, okay. yeah. 
So yeah, let's go with it, start with those to start off with. So you're saying create a page, for example. So then most of our clients will have like a buyer's page or a buyer's section on the website, a seller's section. They'll have a finance section where they introduce financing. Yeah, totally. um, But a lot of them do have a lot of other ancillary services. So just creating a separate page for each one of those. But are you saying just put them on your website? But should they also be publishing them or repurposing them somehow inside GMB? They yes. Do. So I just published a Twitter thread about this last week that went did really well. Lots of people responded to this. And, it, and this is about Google Posts. So my whole Twitter thread was, and, and the video I made and published to YouTube, is most businesses are doing Google Posts wrong. And I bet you most of this audience here is doing Google Posts wrong. And the thing is that Google Posts are Google Posts is not a social media site. It's not a social media channel. On social media, what are people doing? They're scrolling their feed. They want to be entertained. They want to be, you know, learn something new. They want to see what their friends are up to. And you know, sure you see some ads come in once in a while, but that's a very, very different medium than the Google business profiles. Your Google business profiles, what is someone doing when they're looking through different Google business businesses? They are looking to buy. They are looking for to hire somebody for a real estate service. So you don't want to tell people in your Google posts about, mm, just had breakfast at Starbucks. Like that's, that is not a valuable use of that Google post space. Your Google posts should absolutely sell. They should be sales. Everyone should be like an advertisement for a, for a service. So this is where you want to match the services that we just saw come up in the chat. Staging, buyers and selling guides, foreclosures, um, you know, anything that is, is valuable, anything that's a service you provide, anything that sets you apart, awards you have, anything that convinces people that you're the right business. That's what you should be putting both on your website and in your Google posts very sort of sales driven or conversion driven. Like people will hire you because you've won that award five years in a row of best realtor in city, or they want to see another great one is take your review content. So review content, like your very best reviews, republish those as Google posts, uh, put those on your website too. So this sort of cross pollinating between your Google business profile and your website 100% you want to be doing that. Take the, your best reviews, publish them on your website. Take your best reviews, publish them as Google Posts. Take your primary services. And if you're building out an FAQ section on your, your website, and that somehow can speak to the, the value of what you provide, then that could be a Google Post too. Now, there's another really valuable section on your Google business profile. It's called the product section. And I know you're realtors, you don't sell any product, but you all have services and every one of those services could be posted as a product. And so it's a bit of a competitive advantage too, because if you browse through the local search results, you'll see almost every realtor forgot to fill out the product section. And the reason they forgot is because they thought, oh, products, I don't, what do, I don't sell any products. What do I sell? I sell homes. I guess I do that. So you could actually take every house you have up for sale and keep that up to date and put your dang houses into that product section. So that is an awesome opportunity. But you can also list some of your services too. Like if you're talking about buying or selling homes, those could be sort of standard products that keep up there. And then you have, you, you know, you're constantly refreshing the product section, whichever with whichever homes you have on the market. I love that idea. I think it's really valuable opportunity for um, real estate agents. So product section is another uh, great one. The services section, definitely fill that out with all of your services. And then another big one is the Q&A section. So most businesses have not filled out their Q&A section. Google now has providing a Q&A box right in the editor. So you can add and add and update questions. So any frequently asked questions you can think of, of put them in there. Use a, a cool little tool called Also Asked to see to come up with other realtor related questions, and then build out that Q and A section because it can draw people into your listing if they're searching the results and they see, okay, well, realtor one, realtor two, wow, realtor number three has sixty questions in their Q and A. That's interesting. They click on that. They're reading through that. It's just it's like another opportunity to draw them in and learn more about your business. Question: How much? 
is my home worse? Question, how do how does the walkthrough process work? I don't know, all the realtor, all the realtor questions. I don't have those questions in the back of my mind, but you do put put them into the QA section. So that may be something that most people don't think of. Yeah, I think questions are the common questions that you guys get as realtors is really, really powerful. And I want to just share. And I guarantee you know this guy, um, Darren, Marcus Sheridan, um, he wrote a book called They Ask, You Answer. Um, and he gives a lot of ideas around this that you can, a um, lot, lot of the most common questions, you know, especially a lot of stuff around pricing, right? Why, you know, why do you charge what you charge? Stuff like that, that people are just scared to answer. But he gives very good examples of how to do it in a very... Um, you know, thoughtful way where it makes you as the thought leader and as the sort of true expert in your field that draw people into you. Um, and by answering all these questions and doing that on your site and then cross pollinate with your GMB, there's so many opportunities to add in all your keywords for, you know, that you have such as homes for sale, realtor, real estate agent. Um, so there's an unlimited amount of content I think you can create just around questions. Um, but yeah, just going back to when you said products. Oh, yeah. So this is one of our clients, Barry Jenkins. We're really sort of dug in deep. And he's got a lot of different nice. product categories. Um, so for example, all of your just solds, you know, you guys should show off every property you've sold because a lot of other agents don't even share that information. Um, and by sharing it, it just shows, you know what you're freaking doing because you've sold a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. So. You've this, you guys, you guys have all of that um, data. So share that. What Barry also does is he created a Canva template and he just plugs and plays some of the photos, the property information into Canva. And it makes a nice um, little flyer for each property. Um, well, this is for, you know, he, he's really gone deep. Uh, you know, homes with fireplaces. I love it. Example. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. But there's a lot you can do when it comes to products, but definitely yep. all of your um, listings, all of your solds. You can even go into, you know, if you're a luxury agent, you can go into all the luxury properties and share those. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's all public information. Zillow, everybody's sharing them. You obviously you have to give credit where credit's due, but a lot of opportunities, you know, products, properties are your products. So yep. definitely you know, take advantage of that one as much as possible because every single address has your service areas in it. And it's another mention of a uh, keyword, you know, that you want to show up for, which is, you know, the, your local areas. Um, I would also love to hear, Darren, from you. So for our clients, leads, uh, leads are incredibly important. So if we can have their phone ringing more or more bookings or more people um, walking into the office. Yeah. Um, how, and messages. If, and messages. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Those three. It's like direct line to contact me. So that, so that, so these are like the ultimate conversion signals on your listing. So turn on messaging, turn on bookings, and, and set up the call track. You don't actually don't need the call tracking. You just, ideally you want that call to go to your own phone number right your own cell number so um but yeah turning on bookings and messaging uh, is a is a great way to uh, drive additional leads if you have that booking button on can you go back actually i'd love to see that does what are the booking providers in real estate so the booking engine on google so if you click bookings it should be like uh yeah, it links to your online booking tool. So click add another link. So he's already using that one. So you can link to a Calendly or something direct, I guess. Yeah, this is actually really interesting. Usually the bookings uh, functionality uh, connects to a booking engine. So you have to use like a predefined, like whatever the partners are, they have various partners. Like you see this in, and like the spa and massage, a lot of them will connect to their mind valley, their booking engine or mind body, I think it's called. Yeah, mind body booking engine. And so I just wanted to see what was the provider in real estate. So it must be this by, by, well, so that's, his, is that's that his own website? 
That's his own website. Yeah. They're just yeah. Like, so this is just the appointments URL then. So you can right. add appointment URL. So it's very valuable to do that. So I think in the primary category of real estate, they don't actually have the booking. So you don't get the booking button. That's just not a thing in your particular category, but other categories will have it. Yeah. I want to show you the Q&A thing though, because look, click that. So the Q&A here, this is where you can, now you're logged in, you can press that ask a question button. Ask a question. You type in your own question. It's being posted as you, the business owner. And then you post it and then you just answer your own question. That's how you populate your Q&A. It's pretty straightforward. Most businesses have no idea they are not doing this. So building out a beautiful Q&A section is great. Barry Jenkins, man, just go dig through his profile because he's got this stuff dialed in. And these are all the kinds of things that you want to be doing as well. And I want to show you, click the add edit services button. Um, uh, left, left, left. Oh, edit services. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you don't have any predefines. There's these predefined categories that come up with like a little bubble, a little pill, and you could add them as um, services. But it, Google's not presenting any of these. The big question is whether or not adding your own custom services will have any. Uh, this is actually pretty valuable, right? So look at this list of services. This, right? This is maybe the one of the best lists I've ever seen for real estate agents. Make a page on your website for everything you just you see on your screen right now. These are all wonderful pages of your website. And then every one of those pages of your website could be a Google post, right? So it's just like uh, we specialize in, what was it, garden homes or homes with fireplaces, homes with pools, right? There's just so many things you can do here. Um, and those could all be uh, really great um, content. Oh, look at this question from... From uh, Kristen, are blog posts considered a page? Yeah, kind of. But I much prefer a service page. And so you have to think like a blog post is more like top 10 tips for selling your home in Chicago. That's like a more of a blog posty type thing. You're not going to put that as your main section. But a service is, you know, selling or buying homes with fireplaces. Like you kind of want that as part of your main navigation. The problem is like, if you think about how Google crawls your website, things that are part of the main navigation become important pages and they tell Google, what is this site about? Things that are buried in your blog are just fluff a little bit. And it, it's like the longer, the more stuff content you add to your blog, the further the old stuff gets pushed off and it becomes less valuable. Whereas if it's something that you want to rank for that's really valuable, think of that more of a service page and have it under like a drop down of like how we can help you, like drop down, buying homes with fireplaces. Like that, that's going to have more power and it's going to, it's going to help you rank better for those terms if it's an actual service page. Um, one thing I've heard is on the ask for reviews, rather yeah. than using this link, yeah. um, people have been telling me that can actually get that they've been pushing this out, trying to get a lot of reviews and then the reviews just aren't showing up. This seems yeah. like the Google algorithm for reviews has gotten tougher, um, yeah. re re in the last year. Can you talk about that a little bit? I sure can because I've, you know, I've been following this relatively closely and the the person who's written the book on this is Mike Blumenthal. So Mike Blumenthal, local search legend, still at it. He writes at Near Media and he wrote a really detailed breakdown because he studies what's happening in the forums. And so what he's seen is that this is particularly impacting new profiles. You have a brand new profile and you start sending out that link. Uh, Google will flag almost all of those as spam and they get filtered out, right? An established profile typically won't have that problem, but they have actually found a link between using that link, the dang Google provided link, and your reviews getting filtered out. It's almost like Google uses it as a signal to like, oh, this must be a fake review. They must be soliciting reviews <laughs> using our link. So that's pretty sad and pathetic. Uh, uh, I We have an excellent totally free tool on our website is called the Google review link generator. And this tool is awesome because it's going to give you a nice short link. It's review this dot biz slash, you know, Sally Smith, real, real, real estate. So you can, you can actually enter your own custom URL for review this dot biz slash whatever you can put in what your business name. So you get this really nice short link that you can then give out to people via email or text message or whatever. And then you also get 
from the free tool, uh, it generates a QR code for you. So QR code is really cool because that's a great way to ask for reviews. You can put it on a business card. And so you can be like, hey, we just sold your house. Everyone's so happy. Oh my God, money's in the bank. It's the greatest day of your life. And so when you get that, you, you say, hey, it's been wonderful working with you. Whatever you drop off the gift basket, thank you for the sale. And you're like, we would love for you to leave us a review. Here's a card to make it super easy. All you got to do is point your cell phone camera at this QR code. It takes you straight to Google. So our, our system generates that QR code for you. You put it on a business card. In, in a retail situation, I love the idea of putting the QR code on t-shirts. <laughs> like, hey, leave us a review. Just point your cell phone at my shirt. And so you could use QR codes that way. You could use it as signage in your office. So if you if you have an office that people come to, you can have a little sign up that says, please leave us a review on Google, point your QR code or point your phone at a QR code. It'll take you right there. So that's a free tool. Use that instead of the Google generated link and you'll sidestep this weird little uh, review filtering problem that's happening. Um, but yes, Google is trying to crack down on review spam. Uh, it's a good thing because it's long overdue because review spam has been through the roof. You can go to Fiverr and order, you know, 300 reviews for 50 bucks and put them on your listing. And so Google's now cracking down on that because it was an unfair advantage and it was actually ruining their system. People stopped trusting reviews because they all look fake because they were fake, so much fakeness. So Google's trying to fix this problem, but some legitimate businesses are getting caught in the trap as well. And so Yep. That's all there is really to say about that. Uh, if you have an established business, you're somewhat insulated from this. So there is a quick question here, which brings up a good point. Um, if you see an agent with about 350 five-star reviews and they haven't even sold a house, do you think they're fake reviews? Um, yep. And just one caveat to that. I do know a client of ours who runs, who hasn't sold a lot of houses and she wanted to have a lot of reviews and what she did was, um, and tell me if this is ethical and, and, and you know, advise, advisable or not. Um, she would run big community events, um, yep. for everyone in the neighborhood and put on like a bouncy castle and video, I mean, a big movie night and taco trucks oh, and yeah. she would do it all for free for the neighborhood and say, yeah. look, I'm, I'm here, I'm here to help. Um, this is all for free. I just love our community. And if you've got any real estate questions, let me know. Yeah. And she didn't ask for anything, but everyone who came up to her and said, thank you, what can I do? She said, well, if you can leave me a review, here's my QR code, uh -huh. that would be amazing for me. And she gets a lot of reviews that way, but she hasn't cool. sold any houses, but she is, they are legitimately reviewing her as a community-based business. I mean, I'm, that's sort of borderline, right? But what what do you think? I agree that it's borderline, but I also think it's kind of brilliant. And I think it would fly under the radar. I think it would be okay because you're... <clears throat> it's borderline because Google wants a review for the real estate service that you're providing. They don't want a review for how tasty the tacos were at the event that you put on. Right? <laughs> so it's a different kind of thing, but... I also think you can generally get away with it because you can still review a person. You can review Sally. She's a wonderful uh, person. Uh, she really does a lot for our community. Uh, it's a legit review of the person. And that's what a real, a real estate agent is a realtor, but they're also a person. So you can kind of get the review. So I think I think it's a borderline for sure, but I suspect it would fly under the radar. It's a very different thing than going uh, out to Fiverr and buying them from review sellers. That yeah. That's some pure garbage. And I'd say another thing about that strategy, which I really like, is that you're getting local reviews. You're getting reviews from people located right in your community. Google can see that. They, they detect the IP address of the person and the location of the person when they leave the review. Those reviews, will they're not likely to set off any triggers at Google. So I think it's a genius strategy. I love it. And it reminds me of a strategy I've seen with uh, uh, personal injury lawyers. So personal injury, very competitive local search space. When a call comes in, they only take like 10% of those cases. A lot of the cases they're like, we can't help with that. It's not applicable. 
But what they do is they work really hard to try and help that person. So if, they, if it's a case that they can't help with, they still want to guide and direct that person and help them as much as they can. And at the end of the call, they'll be like, I'm really sorry that we can't take your case, but I really, I hope that the information that I've provided to you has been super helpful. Um, if you find it helpful, if you found this call helpful, we'd really appreciate your review on Google. It's legit. Sure, we didn't do your whole personal injury case, but we did still help you. We we still provided value and people are leaving a review on their Google business profile saying, I spoke with Chris at FMC Law and the, he gave me great advice. He really helped me out. Highly recommend this law firm. It's a legit review. And so realtors can do the same thing. You may not close their house. You might not... <clears throat> You might not uh, help them in, in many ways, but you might direct them. You might uh, help them. You probably talk to people all the time. Every in encounter could potentially be a review. And I think it's a really valuable thing for you to think of. Love it, love it. All right, we are, um, we've got 45 minutes left. Um, yeah, any questions from you guys in the audience, feel free to type those in. Um, you can put them in the Q and A. Okay, I haven't looked in Q and A yet. Let me have a look. Um, what I need I'll, to understand, yeah, you yeah. To uh, someone asked, how do I generate the QR code for reviews? Uh, just Google in your browser White Spark Google Review Link Generator, and so our tool will make that QR code for you. You haven't talked about bad reviews and what to do, and so I don't know if you're talking about a competitor with a bunch of spammy reviews, what to do there is you can report them with, with, with what is called the redressal form. So if you Google, Google business profile redressal form, you can report competitors doing spammy stuff, uh, fake listings or keywords in the business name or fake reviews. If you have your own bad review, there is a brand new uh, form. So how to remove a negative review off of your listing. If it's negative and it's legit, then, then great. But if it violates the guidelines in any way, and there's a number of ways you can do it, I have to look it up for you, but there is a brand new form that Google has released. It's going to be hard to find here, but I, I tweeted about it recently. There is, <clears throat> let me just go to my own profile on Twitter. And I'll see if I can find it here. Best time to post to Google businesses. Oh, we should talk about the profile strength thing. I saw that on that list thing you had there. Here it is. Uh, no, no, that's not it. I remove a bad review. Let me just search here. <clears throat> oh, I found it. How to remove a fake review on Google. So someone left you a negative review, then there is this form. Yes, great. I'll post this in the chat right now. This is a form that you can use to report a review on your profile that you think is illegitimate, should not be on there. Um, competitor doing it. So I just posted the link to that. And there's a really great response to this uh, that someone said, they just reported it as off topic and it was gone within the hour. So that's amazing, right? You can try that. If you have a negative review on your profile that looks suspect, try it. Use that form that I just posted into the into the chat. Report that review as off topic and see if it doesn't work. It says, I've, so I posted the link to host and panelists. Whoops, here, let me post that to everyone. One second. Thank you for the heads up. There, that's the link. All right, there you go. That's how you can try if you're lucky to remove a bad review from your profile. So, you know, we're sitting here, we're in February, 2023. And you just, you're about to come out with your ranking factors. Is reviews still like the number one thing? I mean, how high are reviews on the list? It's, it's gotta be way up there, right? No, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> they're not up there. And in fact, a lot of local search experts are, kind of crapping on reviews now. There is this growing sentiment that reviews and review volume does not necessarily impact rankings directly. So that 
it's pretty well established that there's a break point at 10 reviews. There is definitely a ranking boost once you go from, you know, nine to 10 reviews. Ranking boost happens at 10. So that's that we think pretty confidently that there is a, a ranking boost at 10 reviews. But beyond that, not seeing a lot of change, you know, at 30, 50, 70 reviews. It's theorized that once you cross 100, there's another ranking boost. But other than that, it's the review volume itself doesn't have this direct correlation with rankings. And so getting more and more reviews doesn't seem to move the needle anymore unless you cross one of those 10 or 100 thresholds. So that's very interesting. So this is concept that so many reviews and getting more reviews, that's going to have a big impact. Now, I actually think that we see a secondary ranking in fact, in impact. And that is because when you get more reviews and if you have more reviews in the competition, you get more engagement on your listing. People are drawn to your list. You get more clicks, more people clicking on your listing, more people spending time on your listing because they're reading all of your reviews. And so you get the secondary ranking impact, which is through the behavioral signals. Google likes to rank the, the profiles and the web pages that seem to get the clicks and, and the clicks are sticky. People are staying on that profile. Yandex is a the Russian search engine and its uh, code was recently hacked and released to the world. SEOs went crazy. They're like, oh my God, look at all this. We can now see the source code of a search engine. And there is in the local results of Yandex, right in the code, a ranking factor called a three minute dwell time. If someone spends three plus minutes on your Google business profile or sorry, on your Yandex business profile, then that's a signal that gives you a ranking boost. It's pretty easy to imagine Google would use a similar signal because three plus minutes means they liked what they saw. They were on your listing. They were clicking around, looking at your photos, looking at your reviews. They spent time in that profile. So a three minute dwell time is interesting. More reviews, more dwell time, more clicks. Those engagement and behavioral signals have a secondary ranking benefit to reviews. But I'll give you the numbers. So you asked, okay, reviews are through the roof. Reviews are 17% of the algorithm. Uh, and it's inter interesting, well, based on opinion, it's interesting that it stayed exactly the same. Last time I ran the survey in 2021, uh, it was 17%. Again, it's 17%. So if you think of a pie chart, there's like eight or seven areas. So Google business profile signals in 2021 made up 36% of the algorithm. This year, down to 31%. So people kind of scaled back on how much Google's business profile stuff is driving. Reviews, 17%. Your website went from 16% to 18% this year. So 18% of your, it's the second most important thing after your Google stuff. So what you're doing on your website, links, like links to your website, they went from 13 to 11. Citations stayed the same at about 7%, that sliver of the pie. Behavioral signals went up from seven to 9% and personalization went up from 4% to 7%. I don't necessarily agree with that one. I think personalization is more like a 2%. Uh, I actually think that the behavioral signals should be a bit higher and your website signal should be a bit higher and your Google should maybe be a bit lower. But yeah, website and behavioral. And I went, what, how do you influence behavioral? It's all that stuff, your Q&A, your products, your reviews, your Google posts, like enhancing and managing your Google business profile and, and making it shine. Think of it like your website. It's like your second website. Make it look awesome. And the way you make it look awesome is just by filling it with content. Uh, Barry, who you showed, is doing a great job of that. Awesome. Um, one question here is oh, a couple of questions. We have over 500 reviews. Is at um, at any point to is there any point in continuing to hammer on getting reviews from our clients? Uh, review recency is showing as a ranking factor in the search results. Local search experts think that the recency of your reviews play a role. It's a little unproven and it's kind of hard to prove. I'm just trying to see where that one is. Yeah, it comes in as number uh, 15. 15 on the list of most important. So it's pretty high up there out of a list of 150 factors. So how recent are your reviews? But I will tell you that regardless of the ranking impact, review recency is very important for from a conversion impact. If, you, if I'm looking at a, a series of business 
And okay, that one has 500 reviews, but they haven't gotten a new review in over a year. Are, are they even still around? Are they still a business? I, I'm skeptical of that 500 reviews if they don't have new ones coming in all the time. So I think it's an important conversion factor to consider. And so, yes, continue to ask for reviews. It just make it part of your process. You're doing it anyways. You, you close this house, please leave us a review. And let me give you this very valuable tip that I don't think I mentioned yet. This is always ask for a photo with your review. You're selling houses, beautiful houses. Should, please, when you leave us a review, I would love it if you included a photo in your review. Google now lets you add a photo to your review. And that has been proven recently that reviews with photos are sticky. They stay, they stay at the top of your profile because uh, Google doesn't necessarily just sort them by date. And so those reviews with photos are sticky and they increase those engagement signals. People spend more time looking at your profile. And so I really think that's a thing that most people aren't doing. Ask for photos with your with your reviews and it'll have a positive impact. Yeah, that's a great one. You I mean, I see our clients quite often post pictures of them with the sellers, the new buyers of the house, handing them the keys at the house. I love it. Yes, yeah. so do it. Every client should be doing that and then yep. sending them an email after with the photo and saying, I'm yes. so happy, by the way, can you leave us a review and post this picture, right? Yeah, and, and you know who does this every freaking time? Auto dealers. Auto dealers have been on this photo with review game for a long time. And so every time they sell the, the car, they snap the picture. And then when they shoot the email after and say, hey, could you leave us a review? They, they say, oh, and you, here's the picture you can include with your review. It's super smart. Yeah. Yeah. Make it easy for them. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone's asking about, you know, they post have their the reviews on Zillow. No, don't put them all on Zillow. Um, no. <laughs> That's like, we've learned this lesson for a while now. Um, but yep. another good question is, is there a distribution tool? And I know there are a lot of tools out there that will syndicate and push reviews out, but that's not good either, right? I mean, it's not you... possible. I don't think there is such a tool. You get a review on a platform. And so if you get a review on, on Zillow, you cannot now put that review on your Google business profile. A person must go to the site and write the review. The only way to really do it is if you get the review on Zillow, then you reply to the person and be like, oh my God, thanks so much for that review on Zillow. I would love it if you also left uh, a review on Google. It's the follow-up. That'd be really good. But I would generally steer towards Google first. And Zillow is a very close second. So you have to think about which platform has more eyeballs, more people searching. And so Zillow is probably pretty high up there. It's very important in real estate. Uh, and so any other like realtors.com, I don't know what other sites there are, but it is good to get reviews on, on other sites, but Google's probably your number one, just, just in terms of visibility. Yeah. A um, couple of questions here from OK Hogan. He's uh, one of our legends in the community. He's asking, is there a tool for business Google ranking? Um, and yes, there is oh, a great, great tool. It's a great one. It's an <laughs> awesome tool to measure your local rankings. It's called the White Spark Local Rank Tracker. And I know I am biased when I tell you this, but heck, it is the greatest local rank tracker in the world. It is so good. We've been building this thing for over a decade, and it has evolved into this wonderful software that I am so proud to show people. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of people using this software, massive companies with 2,300 locations, down to SEO agencies, down to the small businesses. We have plans for everyone. It's a wonderful tool. And right at the very beginning, you know, Kiwi, you talked about what gets measured improves and that's precisely it. And so this is actually super valuable because if you're gonna go and invest some time, I'm gonna put that new web page up on my, web, on my website for, for this specific service. And then I'm going to build out my Q&A and then I'm going to add more Google posts and then I'm going to update my categories. How do you know if that had any positive impact? You have to have that baseline of rank tracking in place. Set up the rank tracking, put all your keywords in there, everything you can think of, track those keywords. And then when you make these changes, you can measure and see the positive impact of that. There, Kiwi showing the software right here. You can yes. see um, oh. how you're doing, what you're ranking for. Uh, yeah. And so you can see, I mouse over the chart here. Who's this? This is a uh, Kyle whistle in San Diego who we've been doing some custom work for. Well, Kyle is ranking very well. 
And so, yeah, you can see these are the keywords that they rank for, and you can see what, <clears throat> what is ranking. It's very interesting to see that best realtor near me has two matched items. Click the expand on that. On this one? Oh, uh, anyone that has two matched items. Yeah, click expand. Oh, expand. So does Kyle know that he has two locations? <clears throat> he does. He does have two locations. Yeah. Now scroll up to the top and click the Google Business Profiles tab. Yeah, two locations. They're both claimed. They have little check boxes, and you can actually compare them and see uh, how many photos they have, how many reviews they have. Another thing to think about when you get a review with a photo, that also goes to your photo section, helps it stand out. Go back to the rankings tab. I want to show you so, so, something. Hang on, else. just on this one, really quick. Um, yeah. cause these are the same address. He should basically remove one of them, right? Like this one that's got best ranking of only 82 versus this one. Do you think? Th <clears throat> well, no, he's doing a smart thing here. He has set two different primary categories. So uh, two businesses in the same primary category at the same location, one of them will get filtered, but this guy is smart because he's got different primary categories. The EXP Realty has a primary category of real estate consultant and the Whistle Realty Group has the primary category of real estate agency. So you yeah. can do that and you can rank both locations for different terms. So I love that. And actually I would say that I noticed an opportunity there. He didn't have real estate agent on the other profile. So he should add that. And the Google business profiles tab will help identify those opportunities for you. Yeah. But look Another at thing I want to show you is click the little eyeball in the search results down a little bit, go down on the left. Yeah. One of those. Here is your incredible competitive analysis tool. Every single keyword searched in every single location, you can scroll through and compare yourself with your competitors. You can see all their, their categories. Look at that, commercial real estate agency. That's a category that I don't see anyone else. Down at the bottom there, like Rain West, they have four categories. So there's a bonus category that you may not have thought of, commercial real estate agency. Keep scrolling. Are there any other categories? Oh, okay. this one's got a bunch. What's down here? Real estate consultant, real estate developer. Oh, that's the other one. They added real estate developer, property investment. Yeah. So this is great for category analysis and identifying additional categories you can add. But it's also valuable to see how do you stack up against the competition? How many reviews do they have? Do you have versus them? How many photos do they have versus you? You can really see all that. So this is wonderful. And you can export it and then filter. You can also look for people stuffing the for spam fighting. So click that one more time. I want to show you one here. Alex, oh, go back up. Alex Savendra, San Diego real estate agent with core real estate services. This dude is, that is not his business name. <laughs> He's spamming the heck out of that. So you could uh, submit an edit and get that removed. You know what happens when you get real estate agent removed from his business name? He drops and you go up. So if he's ranking above you, edit his profile or submit through the redressal form it's called spam fighting and get him get his name proper what his actual business name is and that's a way that you can move up in the rankings pretty quickly i love it i love it all right mate well we are at the top of the hour we just went a little bit over so um i'm just trying to get that redressal form again Where yeah, just google you it post it into the chat right no, that was a different form. That's the form for reporting a suspicious review. Uh, there is here. I'll just, I'll find it real fast. Yeah. Google. That's a little gold nugget. I want to make sure everyone's aware of. I thought we were going to talk about AI and chat GPT the whole time. Oh my God. We <laughs> ran out of time. I think we'll have you on later, you know, in the year and we'll do, I'm sure there's going to be some massive, advancements in AI over the next six months. Uh, it's still so new. Um, but I mean, if you've got a couple of minutes, if there's a particular- I got time, yeah. There's a particular- oh, wait, no, I don't have time. I have another call. I'm, I'm actually missing it right now. Okay, okay. I'm yeah, gonna I'll post this in the chat yeah. and they're gonna bounce, but I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put this in the chat real quick. This is a redressal form. Yeah, just to and let everyone know, we have a chat GPT webinar. I believe it's next week. And we're gonna show you guys how to use chat gpt with it like a cheat plugin so it's got all the prompt code all the stuff for seo 
um, all been thought out and engineered for you. And you're simply just adding in your cities and a couple of your business name, and you're going to have beautiful content to post on your site. So we've really made it easy, but that's going to be on the next webinar coming up. Um, yep. All right. All Thanks. right. Thanks. Yeah, again, you can, uh, if you want to sign up for any of our software or services, you can get them for 10% off. Use promo code YLOPO. We have a full SEO team. We have our listing service. We'll build all the citations for you. We have software for reviews, citations, and rank tracking. And uh, follow me on all the places. I'm everywhere. I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. So yeah, and I'm I'm on a mission. It's like 20 pieces of content per week. I'm working with a with an assistant now, and we are pumping out the SEO gems all day long. That's what we do. So follow me on the places. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of this edited up and I'll shoot a bunch over to you as well. All right. Well, thanks right. a lot. Thanks for yes. having me. Great to see you again, Kiwi. Bye. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye.